Hello everyone! Welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's Weekend Frivolity! Dun, dun, dun. Well, there's an intro. Hello uh, everyone! Let's wait for YouTube. And welcome back. And it's kicking in. Way to go, YouTubers! Uh, this really is supposed to be our show for the uh, level oneers. Um, Kind of a dovetail to uh, Grimm's uh, offering there this morning, and I thought he did a fantastic job as always. Uh, looked like uh, the level oneers were feeling pretty uh, positive, interacting uh, nicely uh, with uh, um, Grimm and uh, Marat. Uh, great to see Marat. Uh, Marat actually not only is he our level one TA, but uh, he's like super into uh, pie. Um, and the level twoers this week uh, were doing um, WD GAN and super ridiculous WD GAN stuff, right? Celestial cycle, square of nine, octagon. Uh, and actually, we had a really special treat because Marat has uh, connected um, his uh, use of pi and um, that mat mathematical formula. And also, I think, but he hasn't really alluded to this too much yet, but I think he's also incorporated our chaos theory um, into uh, into his uh, GAN study. So it's, it's a great analogy. I mean, we're always, you know, 30 years into the business, still learning, 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 learning. It never ends, never ends. Uh, but... Um, on balance, I'm so pleased. Uh, the, uh, the beautiful sort of harmony of the way um, TRI people interact and help each other uh, learn and grow in a positive environment. Um, and a lot of these people, uh, they share their work because they're just, they're so overjoyed at what they've uh, come into here at TRI. It's a beautiful experience, gotta tell you. Uh, there's this crazy guy, Shark Toshi Nakamagawan. Man, um, this guy on the site, uh, he's, he's it's so beautiful. I Actually, you know, to be honest with you, I, I was actually, uh, you know, especially when you work in the brokerage industry and high finance and all that, you just don't come across these kind of people. Because, unfortunately, that industry just sort of attracts a lot of dickheads. <laughs> And uh, I don't know whether uh, Josh was here. I see that he's posting in the uh, lounge funny gifts and stuff. But uh, for heaven's sakes, hey, there you are, dude. Uh, don't don't go into the financial services industry. <laughs> you're you're beautiful the way that you are. You're probably smarter than a million uh, most of the people in that business. And half of the reason why they're dicks and they come across really arrogant is they really don't know what the hell they're doing. And so as a result, they sort of put on this persona of I know more than you kind of thing um, to try and con you out of your money and get you to you know move your account to there and they collect their annual fees, blah, blah, blah. So um, in a weird sort of way, you know, TRI hasn't been uh, corrupted uh, by all that. Uh, you know, we do these free weekend shows. I see like, you know, literally thousands of people watch these shows, which is totally awesome. And it's free. I mean, there's no Google advertising or, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, oh, uh, pardon the interruption, we have to now sell you some Tide laundry detergent. Like, that's not what, we, that's not even part of us. Um, so it's, um, I gotta tell you, I mean, I start off just with just a nice, um, just a nice uh, sales pitch for TRI. I'm so, uh, so over the top pleased with this community and, and the way that people just, um, are, are living this dream that I had sort of had out in my mind. I mean, did, did any of you guys know, uh, let's see, are you YouTubers, have any of you people ever heard of a place called, um, what the hell was it called? Online Trading Academy or something like that? You know, I have all my uh, level one students, actually I don't know as a level oneers, but all students, they must watch, uh, Mr. Uh, Anton Krall's uh, destruction of the uh, of the brokerage industry videos, um, um, and uh, I think the guy's you know he, I mean he's a jerk and he's so typical uh, financial services industry, uh, but uh, you know the guy the guy at least he calls it a spade a spade right, um, and. Um, there's Mr. Uh, Satoshi Nakamagawa. God, that guy's such a fucking superstar. Uh, just totally awesome people. 
There's Olga. We're all in love. Of course, uh, level tours are doing Gan right now, so uh, all level tours should fall in love with Olga. But I think Olga went to like Egypt now, so it's like, oh my goodness. Uh, I hope she doesn't get uh, <laughs> kidnapped by the Anunnaki while she's there. Um, anyway, I was kind of wanted to hope uh, show you guys, uh, but it doesn't look like I have it. Uh, I put a tweet out uh, this uh, online trading academy. It turns out that they blew themselves up. Um, but more importantly, what I find really, really sad about this, and I can't find it, where the hell is it? Um, is that, um, is that, um, here it is, this guy here, Anton Krull. I mean, this, I mean, this, this guy's like your typical financial services dude. Smarter than a whip. Don't fucking turn your back on him, he'll, or he'll take your money right from you, and he won't even give a shit. But... One motherfucking smart-ass trader, son of a bitch. I mean, that's capitalism up the butt. This guy is super, super smart. But I thought it was just a really interesting uh, commentary that, you know, there are these sort of like online trading academy stuff, but it turns out that, you know, they're promising returns. I will never promise returns to you guys. In fact, I don't even care if you take any of my trade ideas. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me. What I really want you to do is go... Holy shit, that RLZ thing, you know, I think I'm going to watch for that in the future. Or, wow, look at that thing called Divergence that he keeps pointing out and he's trading off of. Man, that's a cool tool. I'd like to use that. You know, that's the kind of, that's the karmic message that I'm trying to convey with all of this. But what I find really sad is, you know, this is, this is so typical. Especially if you bill yourself as Online Trading Academy and it turns out that, you know, basically they bill people for a lot of money. It's very sad. So I, I like the fact that we're not corrupted. We don't have any corporate sponsors. At the same time, too, you know, everybody on YouTube should know. I mean, I'm not a fucking rich, like, millionaire dude. I suppose I could have, um, you know, gone that route and tried to milk people as hard as I can. But I, I'm not in it to do that. I, I'm in it for the karmic message. You guys know all this. I'm not, you know, my wife and my whole story and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not here to rehash that, but I'm just, I'm so saddened by this kind of shit in the world. And to be perfectly honest with you, TRI's whole purpose in life is to stop this and see if we can just balance out the universe. I mean, seriously, if you want, I, I, somebody actually posted a message, I couldn't believe it. Where they were, they were, they were trying to publicly point out that I totally caught the top on Bitcoin. <laughs> but I'm not gonna sit there and go, "Hey man, I caught the top." Wait, wait, you know, I'm smart. Blah 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 blah. You know, uh, if anything, I want you guys to do that, and that's fine. If I do good, then I get the feedback from you guys that I'm doing great. But um, uh, really, what I want, you know, especially these broiler chicken shows, is just sit down. Grab a pen and paper, if you still use pen and paper. <laughs> that might be dating myself a bit. <laughs> and just listen. And if there's something I might say over the next hour or two that you're like, wow, I never heard that before, then I've won. I've done my job. PMA for the win. I will say, managing your money in the market, and especially in this world, oh my goodness, this is insanity. Go slowly, everybody. Don't, you know, don't go all in on anything in this kind of environment. Probably for the next year, it's going to be absolutely. <laughs> Orange man in, a, in White House doesn't help. <laughs> I mean, the I, and I was even joking with, uh, with uh, uh, site members uh, recently that I find that uh, actually um, the stock market is actually acting very much, uh, you know, Donald Trumpy. So, uh, you know, he basically took office here. He took office on a V, well, I guess you could argue a W, but if we change that to a line chart, you know, a V bottom and just didn't look back. And this whole presidency has just been one fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. How many times can I say fuck you in one video? <laughs> I think we're going to have to definitely put this is not for children <laughs> video today. <laughs>
But I hate to say it. I mean, what do you think? Would Donald Trump be a good guy to have at like uh, your kids, uh, uh, your ten-year-old kid's birthday party? <laughs> do you think he would be the best guy to have there? So, in a weird sort of way, I think this stock market actually is profane, <laughs> and this stock market is not for the children. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I. Uh, I've said this before, and this is where it gets really tricky. Because now, for some reason, people are going to associate a very normal flu. Uh, uh, maybe normal is not the right word. You know, a nasty flu outbreak. Keep in mind, end of World War I, 15 million people murdered on the battlefields of France. The following year, 45 million people died of the flu in a nasty influenza outbreak so and that's that's a hundred years ago now so uh you can't say that this is new if anything i think you actually have to be pretty pleased that you know a nasty flu bug that could have killed millions in like 100 200 years ago the death toll right now is about two or three thousand which you know is not good i'm not saying it's good and it's also interesting too somebody on the site was posting a really cool video from a doctor um, who is just kind of going, you know what, everybody just slow down, just put everything in persp perspective. Uh, it turns out that last year, um, something like a million people, uh, they directly attributed their deaths around the world to just the simple fact that they didn't wash their hands. I mean, I don't know how you make that direct correlation, but I thought that was just a really interesting video. I was kind of hoping I could see his chart. I remember uh, when I first got up in the morning, uh, somebody had posted in the lounge. Let's see if I can find it. Um, so what I'm a little worried about here is now people are connecting stock market and stock market valuations with uh, the panic that's going on in the market. And I don't think that that's healthy either. I mean, really, stock market valuations have absolutely nothing to do with this. It is stock valuations are all about human emotion and uh, and panic. And now people are like, oh, well, what if, what if, what if, what if? So, I mean, I don't know whether you want to uh, thank you, Luca, for uh, sharing this. I don't know whether you want to watch this or not. I'll throw it on the YouTube video. I can't, I'm not even really going to comment about this individual doctor. He might be a total charlatan. I don't know. But I thought, you know, I just posted it there in the YouTube chat. I thought it would just be, you know, it's just healthy to keep a, a balanced perspective of all this. So, I mean, I, I'm probably going to get in trouble because I'm playing that video on uh, this video here. So, uh, Watch it, take a look at it, um, and and just try and keep everything in perspective. Um, you know, unfortunately, because this is, you know, very much a beer flu kind of market right now, obviously that's dominating. Interesting, too, though, I was putting tweets out earlier uh, this week that in a weird sort of way, you know, if you can put yourself into a position to take advantage, sometimes you get some really ridiculous bargains out there. Um, and, you know, like I put out tweets like this going, I mean, does anybody look at this and go, gee whiz, it looks like the stock market just went on sale. I mean, it looks to me like all of a sudden everything just went on a 10% discount. So if stocks were so wonderful a month or two ago at these prices, why is it so different now? I mean, you're investing in a company, theoretically you're investing for the long term, blah, 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 blah. You could make the argument that all they did was they just took back the fall rally. I mean, we're right back at the, le basically, the levels, you know, buy when it snows, sell when it goes. I mean, ironically enough, they, they, all they've done is they've just brought the market back down to the previous W. What a surprise. <laughs> and hopefully you all see this idea that capitalism, actually a lot of this, did, did, any, did anybody watch the videos that I put out at the end of January about that monstrously huge uh, leaps options expiry? Where something like, I think it, you know, just on the S&P 500 alone, how many, in, how many uh, stocks are there on the market that have, um, that have uh, options? Uh, there's a hell of a lot of them, right? On the S&P 500 alone, that's just the SPY, one instrument, $7.5 billion changed hands right here. $7.5 billion. 
That's just one asset. We're not looking at the NASDAQ, QQQs, the DIA, or the Diamonds, or the Russell 2000, or IBM, or Microsoft, or Amazon, or Tesla. All I'm talking about is just one asset, $7.5 billion. So if you added up all of the shenanigans that went on in that January Leaps expiry, my hunch is it was actually in the trillions, maybe hundreds of billions, maybe trillions isn't enough. And now that they did that deal, they basically shilled the crap to the public. They have no reason to keep this market up anymore, and they just pull the floor out from underneath it. This, the, you know, the worst part about this is this is just capitalism 101. This has nothing to do with coronavirus. This is just purely capitalism 101. Remember Anthony Crawl? I mean, uh, the guy is super smart, and I would not take a trade against the guy because he'll fucking rip my my uh, <laughs> lungs out. I mean, uh, ri you know, our monster traders are monster traders for a reason, right? Um, yeah, whether wherever the hell that damn tweet went. Um, but uh, you know, I me personally, when I look at this, all I see is capitalism 101. So sad. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, and really, the purpose of today's conversation isn't to be talking about uh, um, uh, the market. Uh, you know, I do that Monday to Friday with through those free videos. So the purpose of today is to talk crypto. Crypto, crypto, tastes great. All right, now, what the hell's going on in crypto? Um, I do think to a certain degree that, uh, hey, Another stand-up guy, and I was really pleased to see all the free uh, Monday to Friday video people gave big uh, shout-outs to uh, Kevin. He, just like Mr. Kvarkinator, uh, oh, uh, he is Mr. Kvarkinator, excuse me. Just like Mr., uh, what the hell's your damn name? Sharktoshi Naka something or other. <laughs> anyway. Just like uh, Joshua, I think that's his real name. <laughs> uh, Kevin, absolutely beautiful person. I'm so privileged to be working with these people. And I, I was uh, very pleased to see that everybody on YouTube, I asked them all to uh, give props to Kevin. He's a great stock trader. He's having lots of fun trading options. Actually, you know Kevin now? Kevin's specialty is he's a warrants trader. <laughs> There's a warrant out for your arrest. Oh, wait a minute. That's something different. <laughs> well, yeah, well, one day we've got to do a video showing what Kevin's done with this one warrant. Uh, laughing my fucking ass off. I think that's actually the symbol is, uh, is uh, laughing my fucking ass off LAMFO and he's just killing this thing I mean it's uh, hilarious it's beautiful to watch so there's a new sheriff in town and he's got a warrant for your arrest <laughs> we gotta somehow Joshua figure out how we spin that for Kevin because I think that's gonna be Kevin's new uh, new um, uh, moniker he's gonna be our warrant specialist anyway um, back to uh, crypto sorry off topic um you know, I, I always like to sort of start my analysis off sort of like big picture, sort of zooming out. What's sort of the message of the market kind of idea? And then we'll sort of drill into like levels. I think it's a good idea to keep an eye on these uh, CME uh, futures boys for uh, Bitcoin. Because keep in mind, they have way deeper pockets than any of us. I mean, they can go strap on five, ten of these contracts in a heartbeat and uh, ride it to zero if they have to. But uh, my hunch is that a lot of the action that we see in the markets now is sort of secretly being driven by these guys. Um... I was actually pretty pleased to see that coming out of the weekend, uh, excuse me, coming out of the week, uh, we actually did on the futures contract. Now keep in mind, this futures contract did expire and they rolled over into the next one. We'll see how price looks here when they open it up uh, uh, overnight and the new futures contract because this is like the spot futures contract. So I was pleased to see that, hey, at least we're kind of like stopping the, 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 the flow here. Um, and if we look back, unfortunately, I just don't know whether we are uh, deep enough on this move to really uh, warrant sort of hunting bottoms. Kind of looks like we're kind of mid-range, eh? And then we just throw in simple reload zones. Come on, you. Oh, I hate when it does that. Anyway, something like that. I'll just eyeball this. Boom. 
Oh, come on, you. Don't fight me. Um, and I'm only doing this just to sort of get a feel for what the CME boys are seeing. Don't necessarily need to take any huge conclusions out of this. All right. Um, and actually, we've kind of talked about this at length before. I've, I've shown you um, uh, this chart. I still think this is what's going on here. If we're really lucky, this turns into just a nice big fat fractal. And we look back over time and we say, yep, that looks like a nice healthy test of reload zones and then a reload zone within a reload zone. And maybe we A, B, C, D our way up into these highs down the road. So uh, really, I don't think this is too unhealthy what I'm seeing here. And if anything, what I what I actually would rather uh, prefer to see, oh, where the hell are we? Here we are. Is I'd actually prefer to see a nice sharp dump into this RLZ test, you know, Wyckoff chest. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> Wyckoff chest. Uh, no, Brian, uh, there's a Freudian slip. Whoops. <laughs> um, Wyckoff test, right? Check. Uh, kind of like this. Work its way down, test it, boom, up, work its way down, a little bit of fuck you, but nonetheless, boom, up, and then work its way down, boom, up. So just think sort of bigger picture. Right? I like to see it work its way down, boom, and then back up. Um, you know, we do a program for the, uh, well, one of the modules in the level two program is uh, identifying horizontal support and resistance. And what I personally found is that these old markers, remember if uh, level oneers, remember your IFP, institutional fingerprints kind of thinking. And of course, there's our reload zone. There's the original Wyckoff check level. Uh, maybe we'll put that like, uh, uh, oh, come on, you. Oh, let's go like that. Maybe do it like yellow. So we have previous lows where somebody said, don't no more down, you go up. Uh, we have this a beautiful original head and shoulders fractal. You can even see they even left a bit of a gap right there at that level. Um, so, I mean, here we are here. I mean, you can see I, I want to be a buyer here. Or, you know, anyway, maybe even along this trend line down here. Right here? It's kind of, I would consider this like no man's land. Um, we're too late to be sellers. Right, and actually, I think, ironically enough, and somebody even pointed this out on the YouTube page, which I was so touched by. Thank you so much for that. Probably better to look at a different chart. Let's go on over here. Um, where's the best one to show you? Do I have them on here? Eh, it doesn't look like it. Um, isn't that weird? I thought I had, I guess maybe do I have it over here. Do, 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 do. There we are. Um, I mean, you know what? This is so cliche. It's actually a bit ridiculous. And, and we were talking about this in on the site uh, in that, you know, Bitcoin is extremely algorithmic. I mean, it is pretty much the ultimate personification of, you know, uh, computerization of this world. So it actually would make sense that it has to follow a lot of the sort of numerical laws of the universe. And I got to tell you, you know, if you haven't seen this before, free information, Wall Street's going to charge you an arm and a leg for this. And yet this is so simple. If you haven't seen this before, you might want to write this down. I like to say on the site, um, the green boxes are for immediate loading of passengers. The red zones are for immediate unloading of passengers. <laughs> Anybody who likes to uh, go to the airport, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, and of course, if you go and buy in a reload short zone, uh, the airport will tow your car immediately. If you go and short in a green zone, <laughs> the airport police will come and arrest you and shoot you on the spot. Probably not a good idea. Uh, but if you could just look at every, and the worst, you know, the, the killer part about this, right, is that, screw the $20,000 peak, let's look at the last cycle. 
The green zones are for immediate loading of passengers. Actually, this one's an interesting one because, um, and I kind of think like right now, actually, uh, good old the corn, Bitcoin, I think we're actually like right here right now. You are here now. If this is a replication of this last cycle, sort of like time-wise, um, where we had big breakouts. And the interesting thing is this level here was an absolutely perfect mountain man tag rejection. Right there, 479. That was a uh, um, Silk Road uh, government auction uh, of, of Bitcoin, seized Bitcoins. Uh, and then I think I've told you in like the free videos before, what I think would actually mark that, yes, Bitcoin has bottomed and we're ready to move to the next um, sort of cycle, if you will is how do we act on this test and this was the tell to me that holy shit this 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 is the bottom we came screaming down to mountain man very similar how we screamed up to mountain man but on the down we screamed down into that level and then the selling just stopped and nobody was interested in selling any bitcoins at that point so, I mean, learn this reload zone stuff, people. I mean, it's just shocking. Well, my hunch here, and I guess you could make the argument as well here, is uh, good old Mountain Man was on the sell side. Look how this guy gets around, eh? Isn't he a son of a bitch? I swear. And the worst part about it is he really doesn't give a shit about Bitcoins. <laughs> Yet there he is, killing the market here. I mean, it's ridiculous. Look at all these levels. I mean, it's just insane. So, you know, I mean, you want to learn from Mountain Man? Okay, you know, I, I'm not here to ram this stuff down your throat, but I'll tell you, I mean, if you want to learn something new, you've never seen this before. 61.8's pretty damn powerful levels. So, you know, the irony of it all is actually, you know, that's it. that in itself is almost like a work of art. It's It's just so poetic. I would suggest, um, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, here, let's change this to maybe red. And I'll change you to red. And he's green. And I'm going to say this is what we want to see if current market is really the bottom. There you go, everybody. Throw that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, and actually, this is also a really good analogy of what we call a reload zone within a reload zone. So can you see how these things are overlapping? I love when you see that. I mean, you can even see the market. There was probably so many buy orders down here. The market came down off of that auction event slammed into all those buy orders and the buying just overwhelmed the selling and the price ratcheted away and never looked back. Um, so that's really what we want to see. And I, I put out a, a video a little while ago sort of saying, you know, what do I want to see? Let's see if we can, what do I want to see if this really is a bottom? I find it fascinating how, geez, every single day you wake up and you go to sites like, um, uh, which one is it? Uh, anyway, one of these crazy websites. I have too many web pages open. This one here. It's remarkable when you go on these sites and every single day, and it's quite remarkable how they keep changing back and forth, right? Oh, right now, is uh, Bitcoin's going to the moon. No, 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 Bitcoin's coming out. No, 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 Bitcoin's going to the moon. No, no, Bitcoin's coming out. It's, oh, wow. I mean, the irony of it all is actually this has been an extremely simple roadmap for everybody to follow. I mean, this isn't really that difficult. You know, I would just simply suggest you uh, you get damn familiar with Reload Zones. And here, we'll even share it with the YouTube audience. I don't even know whether you'll like it, but geez, that is such a cool, uh, just really, really, just I'm going to say very uh, simple concept. Try and learn reload zones and overlapping even better. Look at that, man. Talk about public service. 
What a swell guy that Beamish is. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, at least I think highly of myself. I don't know whether you guys do or not. <laughs> so, you know, there's the picture from the last cycle. Let's go take a look at this cycle. Boom. Can you see any similarities? It's actually pretty cool, eh? Um, we could probably have done all the chaos levels and stuff in here too, and I bet you they out. I mean, just for fun, let's you know, just because it's my show and I can do any old damn thing I want. Let's uh, maybe throw on this react, you know, this violent reaction. Let's see where that painted as sort of the market. If it accepts above, it wants to go to there. Oh, 757. Well, that was a pretty good objective. Not bad. So it's interesting how this chaos here and the resolution of it actually suggested that we wanted to head up into, and good old Mount Man, eh? We're actually got them sitting side by side, bosom buddies. So, uh, and the interesting thing is you could actually do these little chaos theories the whole way up, and I bet you they gave pretty good levels. Um, I like this one. Let's see how that works. Yeah, so that... Oh, look at that. So this consolidation here basically projected that rally peak. Um, and I wonder about these ones. Hey, these ones are just nuts. I bet you they projected huge highs. So we'll do that one. And then we'll do this one. Let's see where they said we were going to go. Well, not bad. So these consolidations projected these rallies. That's pretty kind of cool, eh? Then you could do the same thing. My hunch is this consolidation started to project some serious highs. Let's see. Oh, not bad. Uh, so there's there to there. That projected up into the 7,000s. You can do it the whole way up. There to there. Now we start getting these insane blow off tops. And I'm thinking this one probably is the, the final. Yeah, coup de gras. So, you know, it was interesting when we broke through, um, I guess that's the high. I think that was the SEC rejection. No, 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 no. That, that must have been in, yeah, that was getting really late in the cycle. So, you know, some. it's interesting how these little uh, double bottom Ws all basically projected levels. It looks like they were all validated. Finally, this one was hit, and then that's it. <laughs> so... I mean, take it for whatever it's worth. It's kind of a fun tool that I like to follow. But if we just look at sort of what today's action is, thinking reload zones, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the green zone is for what? Who can remind me? What the hell is a green zone for? Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Um, so we can go back here to here. And we'll do a reload zone. Oh, hello. This is getting interesting now. Do we have some sort of rule about overlapping reload zones? I guess somebody said something about that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure somebody just watching this video for the first time is like, this guy is a, he's a nut. <laughs> Who's he talking to? <laughs> is he talking to himself? <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy oh well i'm just having fun if you get any value out of this great awesome if not uh well you know it is what it is um all right so i can do green boxes within green boxes and i see overlapping reload zones so you know i think we had said earlier uh that what we really wanted to see you know there is that sort of recent w i don't really like the fact that this low is lower than that low that's a little suspicious and i also don't like the look of this this looks awfully suspicious does it make sense that this is a na 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 na, -na level right does that make sense does anybody ever hear in the past me going, no, 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 somebody took that. So the fact that they took this market to new lows right here means there's, you know, the no, 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 no strength is, it's still in question. You know? Ironically enough, um, and I think as I sort of shown here, just like recent consolidations in price, actually, no, that's not good. Let's go daily. Um, this consolidation here, remember, I think I had talked to you guys about this, well, maybe, I don't know about the YouTube video, but I definitely talked about it on the site. 
this consolidation here, this, this, uh, the top, the violent move down, the violent move up, and then the violent rejection of that rally actually paints a chaos target down at about 6,400 right now. Uh oh. So be forewarned, everybody. I also think, too, you remember, like I said just a moment ago, this was a new low. You could argue, na 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 levels. Uh, let's see. Did that actually hit that or not? I wonder if you have to go off of that level. This is this, and this is where I'm still learning myself. You notice how this M'd out and then uh, had this violent reaction. I'm not exactly sure how I interpret this. Do I go off of just this range and notice the rally back, stall, and then breakout? So is it this that actually set up that rally move? Or is it this full range? Now you can see the market never got up to here. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm a student of the market. I, I just stumbled upon this concept here recently. So I'm, I'm watching, I'm learning, journaling, taking lots of screenshots, just trying to figure out what the sort of market message is. So, you know, the irony of it all is if we go off of this range, then you can say, well, we haven't hit the upside target and that's happening, so that makes total sense. We still got some more business to do on the upside. Okay. I mean, if that if that works for you, awesome. Um, you know, uh, on the free video, sort of Monday to Friday, I, we've been walking through this really simple, um, let's see if I can show you, the simple model that I think and you know we talk about these trades on a daily basis every single day so if you go back and watch the videos it's so cool just to watch day by day by day step by step we put the tool on okay well you're long from here your stop is here okay well the targets up here so you got to be patient and disciplined wait for the target blah 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 targets it okay now we're starting to get bearish signals all right we remember we had that uh, cute little reload zone failure on the auction event um, and now thinking short, okay, down into 50% rules. Um, I will say though, you know, you can see that chaos level. It's still, and interestingly enough, right, this, this could become a na 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 event where we stab down against these lows and see whether they hold. As I said before, what I really want to see is how are we going to act at Mountain? If we come down, stab into mountain, and there's just so much buying interest that the price just ratchets away and even creates some sort of V bottom type behavior um, on some volume, that may be it. I would say, though, you know, if I was thinking long, this has definitely got my attention. I mean, it's a pretty wide window, 63.55, which would basically be a nice fuck you against these lows. Um, and uh, and 8500 so we're only talking about a $2,000 price range. My hunch is, for whatever it's worth, and of course I've told you before, people's opinions are worthless, but I'm just going to give you my opinion. My opinion is somewhere in this window here is where we find our bottom over the next couple weeks. I also like to... Like, uh, can does it make sense that if it was just business as usual in the capital markets, if somebody was a Bitcoin hater and they really want to drive the damn thing down, right, they could really shit on it. But what do you think, guys? Is, um, is, um, is the world's attention focused on Bitcoin right now? I don't think so. I don't know. How about you guys over on... Um, over on, uh, what are you guys talking about there? Do you guys see an inverted hammer? Do you know what an inverted hammer is called, Team Sam eBay? <laughs> inverted hammer, I love it. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> anyway, um, it's called a uh, shooting star. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, so everybody's, uh, you know, in my opinion, um, uh, I think everybody's this not even the slightest bit of interest in Bitcoin. And I actually think what's going on here is uh, very similar to my commentary as to why gold is crapping out here recently. I don't think it's really that the gold fundamentals, I mean, I, we're in a fear market. Is gold overvalued? Probably. Is it undervalued? No, it's nowhere. It's well above cost of production. But at the same time, too, does it justify, you know, the gold market falling like $100, $200 an ounce kind of thing, right? <laughs> um, 
<coughs> what's going on in the gold market? <clears throat> and actually, you know what it really is, and actually it's funny because I kept, kept looking at this chart going, I'm going to put it away, I'm not going to talk about it today, I'm not going to talk about it today. But really what's going on here is the broader capital markets are panicking. They're, they're, they're freaking out. They are scrambling and we are now in margin call territory in the broader stock market. So that's, uh, you know, like stocks all bleh, falling out of bed. Uh, <clears throat> where's a good uh, picture to show you? Here we are. Um, you know, stocks completely falling out of bed. Um, and uh, this is the kind of environment, and sadly, of course, um, the, this is where the margin calls. And, you know, the sad part about it, you can see on these futures, right? Look how they're just brushing against these lows. What do you think just happened there? Look at that. What's this low right here? That low is uh, 28.55 and the low here, 28.53 and a quarter. Oh, those bastards. <laughs> what do you think's going on here, guys? So the sad part about it, this is... Uh, this is uh, um, uh, liquidation, stop runs, margin calls, and I think what's going on in the gold market right now, for example, and you know, Julian, he's uh, been uh, just killing the gold market lately. Um, if anything, I think this is, look at, I'm getting absolutely destroyed on, uh, yeah, well, don't get me started on silver. Silver, I, if you watch the Monday to Friday videos, <laughs> oh, I used to be a commodities broker, people. I know these people firsthand. <laughs> Those silver guys are evil. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's, that's another conversation for another day. Anyway, what, the simple message I'm trying to convey here is I believe that gold turned into a situation where people were getting, you know, margin called, stopped, uh, liquidation, you got to raise capital, you need money. Uh, and so they turned to, okay, look at, I can't sell what I want to sell. I want to sell Amazon up top. I, why did I go and buy that stupid Tesla when it was ripping up? Um, so I, I, what can I sell? Oh, look at this gold still up here. I'm still in a bit of profit. I hit the bid raise some cash right and i think that's what and then of course once the ball gets going then they can start running out the late fomo buyers um and uh and start doing you know like uh liquidations on futures contracts and stuff like that and then of course you know on seeing what's going on in the broader market you get also the pile on effect right where traders on the floor are like you know think of uh Anybody ever watch uh, Trading Places? Uh, movie uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd and the Hunt Brothers are trying to corner the orange juice market. And the two floor brokers go, hey, hey, look, you see the Hunts are trying to corner the orange juice market. And everybody just all piles in, right? So I think that to a certain degree, you also got that as well. You know, now is the pile on market. The sad part about it, what I'm trying to show you guys here is that the public, of course, is getting most bearish, and that's back to this tweet, and getting most freaked out after the fact. Why weren't you panicking and dumping when you saw fucking seven and a half billion dollar options transactions crossing the tape? <laughs> that's when we should have been going, uh-oh. <laughs> but did anybody listen to Brian through that? Brian's sitting there going, well, maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Um, so, uh, the old corn. Let's get back to uh, topic at hand. Um, kind of no man's land for the futures. I wouldn't mind one more dump down in here. Kind of what I said before, you know, somewhere between about maybe the high 6,000s and the low 8,000s. I'd love to see RW come in through that. I do find it interesting, you know, we'll move on. That was sort of the positive spin, now the sort of negative spin. I talked about this last week. Remember we've been watching these moving averages really closely here. Did you guys notice, how uh, about over, uh, over on YouTube, did anybody notice people talking about, oh, Golden Cross, everything's straight up from here. Did anybody see all that kind of talk on Bitcoin recently? Do you think that was maybe not the best thing to follow? Golden crosses are dangerous. Anyway, I guess not. Uh, maybe there's a bit of a delay on YouTube. No, Andre, you know you didn't hear anybody talking about golden crosses? Oh man, I heard tons of people talking. Everybody was like, man, 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 this is it, man, man, man. 
What all I'm going to say is, I mean, I was, you know, I was pretty impressed with this counter trend rally, but the irony of it all is all they did was they just brought the moving averages back together. And I remember specifically, I said, if these things are going to cross, expect some sort of check. Um, there's your check. And I even remember saying yesterday or uh, last broiler chicken show. Then now we have the potential that, if, and remember last Sunday we were sitting up here, right? Going, eh, well, everything's perfectly fine. Um, and I said that if we break through whatever this candle low is, that, well, who can tell me what three bar pattern is that? No one? Anyone? Yeah, it looks like you guys here in the uh, uh, in the lounge uh, know your shit, so that's good. Empire? Well, it's not the best empire because uh, that would sort of mean that the uh, half of the Empire State Building is hollow. <laughs> uh, it is a fractal, right? And, you know, the classic fractal people would be like, well, five bar fractal is your real fractal. So that means if we close out here and tick through that low, that is a massive five bar fractal. I'm happy with just looking at this as a three bar fractal with the low, the loss of this low, which was uh, 93.12 uh, through this week was a very big sell signal. So, I mean, the long and short of it here is this bull rally, it's done, it's over. Um, we are now in the process of just simply asking, is this still a bear market. Oh, Brian, you didn't just say that, did you? Um, we might find that um, this might actually be our trading range for quite some time going forward. Really, we can only call this, I mean, let's see if anybody got, and keep in mind, this is a weekly chart, so it's a bit higher time frame. What letter of the alphabet do we have to see here for us to go, yep, this is a bull. We've got to see one letter and one letter only. Well, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, Filson. Is there a letter of the alphabet that we need to see on the price charts that, yep, this damn thing has bottomed and it's heading higher? Well, I hope we don't get any M's. <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> Team eBay says M twice. What are you? Uh, uh, are you a bear, Team eBay? Are you are you rooting for lower? <laughs> oh, okay. So now he changes his message. I meant W after all. Um, the point here is, I, I mean, we sort of got the smatterings. I think this was probably more like a daily, and you know, we change that to a weekly. You can kind of see it, right? I mean, remember that last cycle image I showed you? What do we really want to see? You know, remember, look how long, and really this one was great, because look how wide that is. You know, uh, um... Uh, what we really like are those nice wide W's. That's, I mean, that's beautiful, right? Um, lots of back and forth, testing the range, and then a nice convincing breakout through the top of the range. That's really what we want to see. So here we are. Not bad. You know, this, uh, this was the, the classic W. In fact, actually, I would argue this is a triangle within a triangle. Uh, but, you know, this was very sort of head and shouldersy, fractally. What I'd really like to see is, you know, kind of like what we were saying earlier. I mean, something like that would be just beautiful. Probably won't happen that quick, uh, that slowly, though. Probably, you know, I mean, maybe have an event and all that kind of crap. Maybe we do something along those lines. But, you know, like you could just look at this and go, well, that doesn't look very symmetrical. If anything, what I'm kind of hoping for is maybe we're doing this. And again, it's just hope, right? At this point, all we're doing is we have to wait. And you just have to sort of see those bigger, wider Ws. So can you kind of see how this is like the bottom? Then there was a rally. Then there was a check. And then there was a breakout. So here's your bottom. Then there's a rally, then we have to have the check. What do you think the odds are that that pullback there was uh, 61.8? I think probably pretty good. Let's go see. 
And this is nice and scientific, eh? This is what we call a squiggly line theory. <laughs> Sometimes it's good, though, just to sit and just, you know, just let your uh, sort of, you know, not necessarily imagination, but just sort of, you know, get into sort of like what do you sort of symmetrically feel is going on in the market. I know that sounds kind of weird, but believe it or not, it's pretty healthy. Because um, <laughs> keep in mind, a lot of this shit just moves totally symmetrically. Okay, so what we wanted to find out was, was this a 61.8? Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Look at that, eh? So, um... So this is saying 36.57.72, and the low there was... 36.58.19! Oh, you son of a bitch. So remember I'd sort of said, you know, that 2015, you know, the big uh, auction and then a slam down into uh, Mountain Man, test of previous breakout levels, and then, no, I have no interest in being here. I'm a bull. You know, in a weird sort of way, that's a microcosm of uh, what I want to see here. So same sort of thing. Um, I want to see this thing slam down into, in this case here, it looks like uh, 79.81. Um, there's the original breakout. I mean, what I really want to see, it, you know, I mean, it's just my wish list. Slam down into here, then a nice rejection, and away we go, back up. So, I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to be calling bottoms right in here. What I'm a little bit worried about, which would kind of suck, because it would mean that uh, we're not quite ready to go. Um, we still have some back and forth to do. Hold on a second. Is, um... Yeah, that's probably good. Is uh, somebody was posting in the site earlier today, which is totally plausible. Uh, we might, and if if we do do this, and just sort of keep your eye out for it going forward, because this wouldn't be good. Is uh, this you notice this rally peak, uh, this key low, rally peak? Are we head and shouldering here? So if we hold this trend line and hold these lows, not going down to 61.8, then we counter trend rally, and then we start failing on the other side. Well, of course, hopefully everybody sees this big head and shoulders, which unfortunately probably has to paint. Ironically enough, we might even be able to start seeing uh, chaos levels and that head and shoulders start to line up. Right, so if we go like, there's your neckline, something along those lines. So uh, your head and shoulders target is going to be something like this, just eyeballing it here, there to there, and there to there. And that takes us, oh, fuck me. Huh. <laughs> and that, it's kind of sick when you start doing that, eh? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> So somebody on the site today was saying, you know, uh, you know, Brian, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, going long against these lows and looking for a counter trend rally. And the interesting thing, too, is if we do a fib off of this range, what do you think the odds are? That's probably like 38.2s, good old Ray Burchette. Yep, look at that. Man, it's funny how this stuff is so cliche after a while. So, um... You know, uh, shoulder, neckline, head, neckline, shoulder, 38.2 battle, Ray Burchette. Also, too, uh, we could see that, you know, uh, you know, remember I talked about this as a nasty fractal fail. I think you could make the argument that there's probably a bunch of sell orders sitting in here that would just love to get short from that level. I don't think it's going to get back up there, though. I think they probably want to get short like there, right off of that. Uh, fail low there. That's a swing low. Uh, and gee whiz, that also lines up. So now you can kind of see, I guess in a way, what I'm trying to say here is I would prefer that we just go straight down into uh, mountain man levels, into this original structure, and then turn back up. I would not like to see that we actually turn here and then counter trend rally, relieve all the oversold, actually get the market overbought again. And then we roll over hard because then if we lose this trend line, that paints that head and shoulders. And now that chaos objective is actually starting to look very realistic. So.
boo, hiss, hiss, boo. Point of the matter here is, you know, and especially for like, um, you know, when I talk to the public and just, you know, keep it simple, stupid, don't overthink this. There's no buy signal anywhere in sight here. Uh, volume momentum is accelerated to the downside. The bears have woken up. The bulls look like they actually fell asleep here, but I do see that the bulls kind of went, oh, no, no, wait, 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 we're still here. Um, <clears throat> they would need... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, so it looks to me like one, two, three, and uh, level oneers, I, I, I don't know whether you... Did they just do, uh, is there any level oneers in the class today, or in the video here today? Uh, nope, 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 nope. Oh, I just got old, 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 old OGs in the video here today. Um, did you guys do volume impetus today? Or did you, I think you guys did candlesticks today. Is anybody over on YouTube in the level one? Next week? Okay. So if anything, this is good for you guys because you're going to get sort of a sneak peek. Uh, so as you're watching, um, X level one. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, as you're watching um, um, the, um, the video lectures uh, for this coming week, all about volume impetus, this is a really, really good working example right in front of your faces so uh we get uh one high so bulls hey i'm a bull look at me Rah! and the bears uh, they're not really that active i mean they're still there but they're not as big as the bulls the bulls are in charge notice this high uh-oh uh, the bulls are kind of losing their enthusiasm and then more importantly this high Notice that this eye is actually lower than this eye. Uh-oh, that's 16,000. This is 17,000. And then notice this eye is lower than this eye. Hey, what the fuck? This is what I call the bulls falling asleep. And actually, they uh, will officially fall asleep if we actually see a green day that trades less than this level. Um, and that is uh, 4,387 coins. Mm -hmm. um and man we came really close there look at that bar there 5600 so the bull hasn't completely fallen asleep but i'll tell you uh not filling me with a lot of enthusiasm uh and this pattern is still valid so if you see like an up day maybe we have that small rally day like i was talking about over here we get that small rally, but it's on extremely light volume. That's a warning sign. Be careful. Um, at the same time, too, let's look at the bears. Bears were fairly active. Then the bears went to sleep. They stayed asleep. Oh, hello. Bears woke up. Notice they started to nod off again. Whoa, I'm a bear. I'm still awake. So the bears are still definitely, the bears are painting higher red bars here. So the bears are definitely awake. And as we said, the bulls look like they're threatening to fall asleep. And then we look at our indicator and just to confirm what we're seeing. And sure enough, we can see that while the bull was still awake, OBV was working its way higher. The bull starts falling asleep. You can see the OBV is floundering. The bear wakes up, rawr, and OBV, what do we say if we ever see uh, the market smiling at us? Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Okay, and if you probably have never, you know, like I'm a weirdo, probably, I don't think anybody will ever tell you this in the public. It's so bizarre. I don't see why not. It seems to have worked, you know, for over a hundred years. But for some reason, people just don't talk about this stuff in the public. But take a screenshot of that and tell me, if you can, what are we supposed to be thinking if we ever see the market smiling at us? I was kind of hoping I could put the uh, OBV separately, but I guess not. Mm. No. <laughs> You're just not going to cooperate, are you? I will go like that. 
And we'll go like that. Actually, here. So you can see the volume trend has actually changed here. It's yet another sort of anecdote, and I think everybody watching this video kind of knows that Bitcoin kind of topped out there, right? So a uh, really good analogy that if you see your indicator smiling at you, that's not a good sign. Um, so, uh, you know, that's volume. And they always say what volume speaks. Who can answer that? Who can finish this line? Actually, let's see if anybody. I love to. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, okay, stop. All right. If you like this video, if you've seen any value in it, Hit the downvote button now. I'm gonna do some reverse psychology. Let's see if I can get the downvoters that would normally go, oh, I gotta do the exact opposite of what he said to actually do <laughs> the exact opposite of what I said here. <laughs> I'm just being stupid now. If you're watching this for the first, hey, somebody hit the upvote. Hey, good, it worked. <laughs> oh, there's three downvotes. Oh, wait a minute, no, 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 don't do what I'm saying. Do what I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> Do whatever you want with the upvote, downvote. I thought I always find that hilarious. And everybody on this site gets such a big kick out of me freaking out over the <laughs> I mean, I, I, I suppose I'm at the point now in my career where I uh, triggered. <laughs> yeah, totally. Eh? If you like the video, if you like my work, throw us an upvote, hit the like button, subscribe, ring. How does it go? Where's Colleen? Oh, we haven't seen Colleen. Actually, Colleen wasn't feeling so good lately, yesterday in class. Hope she's doing okay. Anyway, down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, let your heart dictate what it is you want to do. If you don't like me and you want to downvote me, I don't care. Go ahead, downvote. Downvote all you want. Uh, but um, but um, uh, I think from the analytics and all that kind of stuff, it helps us if you upvote. But, you know, uh, do it as you please. Okay, so back to our story. Uh, you know, if, if somebody in the public was, uh, Brian, uh, I, and I think I've sort of given you sort of the, uh, the general gist of what I'm seeing. Um, you know, the down trade is working. Could you make the argument that you could still be in some of this trade and just working stops against, you know, three high lows, uh, moving averages, ATR systems, um, I think uh, Seward's got a linear regression stop model working, which I'm so impressed with. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't that that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Uh, I do like to trade setups, um, and and ideally, because remember, you know, I do find it interesting on a day to day basis, and you know, it'd be really interesting to see all you people in the public how you feel. I don't really care too much about where prices go. Uh, what I care most about is if I'm going to actually put myself at risk, I know very clearly before I even put any money at risk. Um, I want to know exactly where I'm going to enter. I want to know exactly where if the market moves to that level, I have been proven wrong and it makes it very easy for me to just go, eh, you were wrong. Next bus in 10 minutes. You probably heard me say that once or twice. I don't ever put myself into a position where I expect to be uh, right. I, and I know that must sound weird. I put myself into a position that based on the work that I've done in the market, I know I have a very high statistical probability of being right, but you just never know in this stupid world. You just don't know. And I think it's really dangerous to to uh, to set yourself up to come to the market to be, yeah, I'm, I'm Mr. Predictor. I know exactly where this market's going. Just follow me and you're guaranteed to make money. Oh, God. That, that's just got disaster written all over it. So like I said, whenever I, and remember also too, I think it's super important everybody um, 
Let's see if anybody can find it. Um, we uh, Every uh, now and then we like to do the personality test. Um, it turns out I'm an ENFJ, I think it is. Uh, Morpheus, which is so cool because I totally uh, would love to consider myself um, a Morpheus type person. I mean, I, I don't look at myself as the superhero. I look at myself as the guy that helps the superhero be the superhero. And I love seeing that on site. Like, uh, you know, I talk about uh, uh, Shark Toshi um, Naka McGowan. Um, and he's a great example of that, where I really hope that sort of my leadership and my direction, this guy does just incredible work with computer scripting and, uh, you know, trying to learn the secrets of the universe. Um, you know, uh, Kavarkinator, same thing. Um, I, I would love nothing more than to one day be at a conference where everybody is just gushing over what a wonderful money manager Kevin is. And I just get to sit in the audience and go, way to go, dude. I'm your biggest cheerleader. That's, that's who I am. I'm a weirdo that way. So, but also part of that personality type, and this is, this is the important thing for you guys on YouTube and I would strongly suggest you all do this. If you're serious about trading, you, you have to know what type of person you are. You have to. Yeah, I know, dude, but I'm an emotional guy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, also pretty weirdo, eh? I guess uh, all the... Uh, the <laughs> uh, I, I, whenever I touch on anything that sort of is at the core of why I'm doing all this, it always brings out an emotional response in me. And I think that's good. Uh, the day that you lose that emotional response, that that you, you're not inspired, um, that's the day, actually, I think I should stop doing this. Where I'm like, I don't give a shit anymore. I don't care, teeny day. Blow yourself up. Why do I give a fuck? You know, but... Um, you know, that, that's, that's the weirdo that I am. That's why I'm doing these videos. <laughs> I'm weird. So, uh, yeah, when I start talking about sort of like good karma and being, uh, you know, uh, making a positive difference in this world and, um, and seeing the people that I work with do really well. You know what made me so happy this past week is uh, one of the TRI site people. And this guy used to drive truck. So, I mean, you can't say that he has a university degree and he has, like, you know, uh, a mom and dad bought him a position in a firm and stuff like that. He's out there trying to uh, apply to uh, different uh, analysis firms and stuff like that. And he's going, I mean, just to have the balls to go in and say, yeah, I'd like to be an analyst. This is a, this is a. And, and the company reached out to me and said, can you please tell me a little bit about this gentleman? Uh, would you endorse him? And I was just like, my response was this, this, he's a, he's a beautiful human. I'm so proud to work with him. PM, he's one of these PMA type of people. Um, and, um, uh, absolute just stand up individual. And I felt so proud to be able to, uh, to, to pound the table on a person, <laughs> not pound the table on a stock idea, but pound the table to this firm that, the, yep, you're heading in a great direction talking to this gentleman. That made me so happy. So um, anyway, back to our story. You could still be short. Oh yeah, the whole reason why I mentioned this was uh, ENFJs. It turns out that I'm a very, um, um, how do we say this? I need my personality. I need those rules. If I don't have that sort of framework in place, I'm a mess. I get emotional. Um, I make stupid decisions. Um, so, you know, and there are a lot of us that are like this. You know, this isn't this isn't uncommon actually and I and I was even talking with our advanced students here uh, in class on Saturday um, actually it might have been the level twos both 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 the uh, student bodies once you get beyond level one I feel that you probably know more about the market than probably 80 90 percent of even the people on CNBC which makes me sick to my stomach 
how bloody corrupt those people are and how mindless they are. Um, but I was uh, talking with the students and, um, and um, oh, what the hell was my point? <laughs> as soon as you mentioned CNBC, CNBC my mind scatters. Uh, okay, so back to, uh, oh yeah, ENFJ. I'm the type of person that I have to, for me to have low anxiety and just to come and run my small business of trading, I have to put away all the rhetoric. I have to hunt setups and I just simply have to trade the setups and the setup has my entry, it has my risk level where I'm gonna be proved wrong and more importantly for a guy like me, it has to have my profit objectives predefined and I do best when my order is sitting just one tick above that profit objective and levels hit, ding, 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 I'm filled, trade is done. That's how ENFJ operates best. Now it's interesting because not everybody's the same. And I know that, um, you know, Julian, for instance, he's a very different personality type. I don't, I, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, so I kind of know what sort of, what is the, the good sort of framework and basis to launch yourself. I would make the argument that half of my job is to try and set you guys up for success, to try and make this as easy as possible. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you go that ENFJ route, that everything's predefined, and your trading is just simply, did I do what I said I was going to do in my trading plan, which is all pre-vetted. Um, so, uh, students that come to TRI, you're going to get that up the butt. And really, it makes sense. I mean, this is my personality. It's the way that I work best. So if I'm going to be teaching, I'm probably going to be teaching that works best with my personality type. Um, the only other thing that I would add to that conversation is just simply when you do your personality test, it turns out that ENFJs or whatever my symbol is, we're actually really well suited for a life of trading. You may find that when you do your personality test that actually your personality is really unsuited <laughs> to trading and you are going to have to go the extra route to try and ENFJ your life even more. And that's why we teach students to do things like journal, get download your emotions onto those vehicles not onto your trading and onto your trading account because if you download your emotions onto your trading account i can guarantee it's not going to end well um logging your behavior did you actually uh, vet your setup did you actually follow your plan did you enter your order at your correct level did you have your stop at your correct level did you manage the or risk the appropriate amount of money based on your trading plan on the trade. Did you, I mean, there's so many ways for us to fail at this game of trading. No doubt about it. Um, in fact, you know, for our advanced students, we, you know, for those people that are like, look at, I keep making mistakes. I got to do something about this. We have things like demon finders and mistake logs where you actually have to go through the process and visually see how much your mistakes are actually costing you in real dollars. Um, okay, so back to my story. Um, the trade that I did do on this, again, speaking to my personality and to my uh, type of uh, trader that I am, I set my profit objective at the 50% level. And of course, when the market hit it, ding, 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 I was done. That doesn't necessarily mean it's you and it doesn't mean that this market can't go lower, but I really like to use 50% rules as profit objectives because frankly speaking at this point, the market in my opinion is now, where it's in no man's land. We could very easily just bump along Mr. Gann and head back up. We could very easily dump down into reload zones, but there's no guarantees of that happening. And you know, sometimes, like we've seen some, like remember, I, you know, when I was, if you watch the free videos, the last dump into mountain man level, it just dumped and took off. And remember, we said that's the kind of sign that we want to see of a very strong market. So we might just zip down here, tag mountain, and then just take off like a rocket. That's what I want to see, right? 
Um, so I don't really like using profit objectives down here. That's why I like using a 50% rule. It's like you're, you're, you're not being too greedy. You're being relatively conservative. And the statistical odds of the 50% level getting hit, anybody who's done WD GAN with us, we know that it's extremely high. In fact, markets, they very rarely don't hit 50% rules. So not really a big surprise. We're just sort of sitting here, bump, 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 right at the 50% rule. <laughs> the problem here is, you know, if I was thinking about buying, uh, let's see, how many reasons should we have to consider taking a buy or taking a trade? Should be some. I think there's a number that I squawk about. Let's see if anybody on YouTube knows what it is. No, I absolutely hate that thinking, Paul. Paul, that kind of thinking will destroy you. Andre says three. Nick says three. All right. <laughs> Dan says one plus one equals three. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and, and should they be all the same signal? If I had RSI, MACD, and stochastics, I'll give me a buy signal. Is that three uh, good reasons? What's the word that we need to see in that? And actually, it should be like three words, not just not not just uh, you know the the number three or three something reasons. How does that go? Unrelated, Andre. Andre, you've put a lot of work into these free videos. You've really mined the shit out of me. So I, I'm glad to see that uh, this stuff's catching for you because you you put a lot of effort into this. And I'm kind of glad to see that you're doing this. Yes, three unrelated reasons. That's the key here. So, you know, really and sadly, is the 50% level a trade location for us? Is that is that a location where the statistical probability of us buying at the 50% rule the statistical probability of the market going in our favor is actually in our direction. Is, is that a level? No one? How about you guys in the lounge? Mark, how's your, uh, how's your brother doing? Actually, I haven't seen you in a while. Great to see you. Are you still in uh, down in the southeast states? The Moran brothers. I remember the Moran brothers. <laughs> well, I guess he's not here. Um. All right, what are you saying over there on uh, YouTube? You are saying, nope, nope, RLZ, nope. Yeah, that's right, because the problem is, is taking the trade of the 50% rule you know, it's kind of like the 50% rule. It's kind of like a coin toss. You, you just don't know. You know, it might go up, might go down. It's basically a coin toss. Um, okay, take it easy, uh, Joshua. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, I uh, didn't embarrass you too much. Brian, got a question about membership. Is it possible to get a year membership and pay every month? Uh, I don't think so. Um, that's actually, you know what, that's probably Nick. Why don't you put that in the comments? Cause, uh, Julian, he's sort of the money man here. He does all the back office work. Um, and, uh, he'll be the one to give you a straight answer on that. Remember I'm, I'm the trading guy. I'm the ENFJ guy. I'm the guy who's going to cry on YouTube, right? Uh, I'm not really the best at, you know, business, business, business. If it was up to me, I'd just give it all away for free, but I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> so, um, Nick, if you could just put that uh, comment right here and ask that question. Hey, there you are, Josh. This Josh. Everybody see Josh just uh, posted a message there in the, um, in the uh, Google chat there. I don't know whether you get to see him when you watch this video later on. But Josh is absolutely the textbook reason why I did this site. And I love the guy. He's such a little cutie. Um, and uh, and he has just owned this. He's He bought the Kool-Aid and he's just killing the market now. <laughs> I think you're short right now, aren't you, Josh? Are you still short? I think he said he was short. I'm still short. Just riding my shorts. <laughs> Oh, it's be I mean, jo oh, oh, no, you're not? Yeah, you, oh, oh, I don't know what he's answering to. Anyway, 
Okay, so the point of the matter here, 50% rule is not really the best trade location. It's kind of a coin toss, whether we go up or down. So I can't even think about going in and buying because we got trade location. So we're not even there. Um, second reason that we would justify considering taking a trade, how about uh, indicator confirmation? Well, we just had a fun conversation about OBV. Is OBV uh, bullish right now or is it bearish? <laughs> well, I blow my schnoz. No one? I don't know how delayed these uh, YouTube uh, feeds are. Anyway. It's bearish, right? We just went through the whole damn thing. Right? And uh, level winners, you're going to be learning volume impetus, and that's a really great tutorial. Everybody can see here the bears just woke up. Rawr! And big fat M in OBV. And a moving average crossover breakdown. Rawr, 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 rawr. I'm a bear. Rawr, rawr. So that's uh, volume momentum. How about price momentum? And you know what the sick part about this is, is I totally called this on YouTube. I tried to tell people to slow down and that was that Litecoin example. Man, that was an incredible uh, example. Just absolutely textbook. Uh, let's go back to daily. All right, we will leave that alone, and let's pop on over to Litecoin. Remember this? A Litecoin, Litecoin, tastes great. Uh, you know, and you know the sad part about it? There was some gentleman who joined the website and asked me whether he should buy Litecoin when we hit this AB equals CD, and I said, I don't know, I would be very tepid, and here we go. So really, really good lesson. I sure hope that gentleman's still on the site. I haven't really seen from him. If, if you are still on the site and you're watching this later on, can you just uh, let, uh, send me some sort of message saying that, uh, Brian, I survived through this? Uh, regardless of whether you did anything or not, I would hate to hear that uh, you uh, didn't like my bearish call here. The market moved higher. You said, fuck you, Brian. And it turns out that my uh, cautionary words were actually exactly correct. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, what really bothered me about this chart was the nasty, nasty breakdown in price momentum that we had heading into these levels. Just horrible. Uh, and learn from this, right? Again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring Colleen's bell, all that kind of stuff. If you think you can actually use this as usable information going forward in your life, because I'm telling you, it was. It was really, really good information. Uh, where the hell was it? Uh, about five months ago that I did that. Here it is. When you see this kind of action, markets making higher highs, your momentum, this is a price momentum indicator. This price momentum indicator is making lower highs and then goes in M's. This is a major, major warning sign. Major warning sign. The market is not nearly as strong as you think it is. So not only did we have trade location, AB equals CD, we also had momentum confirmation, and you know, the end result is boo 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 boosh. Down we go. This is also an excellent anecdote of that reload zone concept, right? Market dumped. Uh, where's this rally drawn off of? Uh, uh, it doesn't make sense to do it off there. You do it here, right? That low market rally back up into that reload short level. You could do it off of this low, right? Market dumped, rallied right back into that reload zone. Actually, that's probably the better one there, right? And there's that guy, Mountain Man, a jerk. Inside actually is a fractal top, and boo 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 boo. Down we go. And what was worse about this, like they, they pulled these nasty, just face rip candle moves down. This one here, you can see I had two arrows because this candle here at one point was another one of these. And I got a funny feeling they suckered into a whole bunch of people going, oh, look, they just did it again. Of course, they're going to take the market up. So I'm going to go buy here and boosh, 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 down we go. 
So, you know, here is your trade location. Shit doesn't change. Exactly the same. Reload zones. What's cool, of course, uh, you know, there's so many different ways to skin this cat. You know, uh, level two, of course, I'm a huge fan of volume profile. You can see there is a big hole in the profile. Uh, we like to call these holes muoks. So if you uh, are interested in trying to figure out what that means, uh, Google the word muoc. It's Spanish. Um, and um, I'll, I won't go into great detail, but I'll uh, leave you with the thought, you know, muoc. Just think, obviously, this is a pretty important level right here for the market, and this is a pretty important level here for the market. So, you know, I'll sort of leave that to your imagination. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> it's such a stinker. <laughs> anyway, you can see it's in reload zones. Remember we talked about reload zones within reload zones, overlapping reload zones. We love those. So, uh, original market structure, I'm thinking somewhere. You know, I got this cool trend line. But here we are at 57. That's like down here at 40-something. Jeez, we could still lose another 20% here. Uh, indicators, I, who could tell me? Who, uh, and, and after what I just did there on the Bitcoin volume impetus, who could tell me? Who's driving the bus here? <laughs> Hogue. Hogue, I remember, uh, yeah, Hogue loves, loves his pox, uh, but he also really loves his value high and value low, right? But who could tell me? Who's driving the bus here? Somebody's driving the bus. And we're all going off the cliff together. Who is it? <laughs> yeah. The bulls? I don't think the bulls are driving the bus here. Sorry. <laughs> Those bears are driving the bus here. Duh, bears. <laughs> That's good. The red team, yeah. So, and of course, you see the M tops and below the moving averages. Nice failure here. So, another really, really good anecdote for level oneers as you're going through um, the uh, the course module this week. You can see how the bulls were very active here. Then the bulls went to sleep, and you can see the bears woke up, and now they've taken over. It's good to see the bulls are saying, hey, you know what? Oh, we're not totally gone. We're still here. But for us to be bullish, what we really need to see is higher lows and higher highs on those green bars, and we need to see lower highs and lower lows on the red bars. So same sort of thing. We're not in trade location. Momentum, both volume momentum, price momentum. We talked about the bearish divergence. You can see we just made another new low here, so there's no sign of W anywhere in sight. I suppose the only sort of saving grace about all of this is that our, oh no, it's not even. I was going to say RSI is oversold, but it's not. It's at 35.97. And, you know, uh, I don't know whether you guys uh, followed along my RSI tutorial that I gave you guys. You can see the first M stop, the bull. Um, probably this now. Second uh, trend, uh, full on bear. And I get the feeling, I don't, don't have no idea how this is going to work, but I get the feeling that this almost looks like a third. This would be our purple. So, it, you know, uh, if we get any kind of Wing down in here, this is the last leg of the move down. If we get any kind of Wing here, this is the noobs. They're all going short now, which, of course, is, is just asking for trouble. You know, just the same as going long off the 50% levels asking for trouble, going short off the 50% levels also asking for trouble, too. We could very easily see, you know, like it dips down to 61.8, puts in a W and just takes off, and all these late shorters just get fucked up the ass. So, you know, that's that's sort of the market state that I'm thinking in. The problem here, though, of course, is we're not, you know, we just did this recent failure. Um, we're not oversold yet on RSI, and, of course, there's no signs of W. So can we be bullish? Hmm? No. Is it too late to be bearish? I think so. Right now, you know, you just got to cool your jets. 
Um, I suppose we'll finish off with uh, Quick Boo at Ethereum, and then I gotta go get pretty for the boy, and uh, make sure he has a good day. So let's see what we got here. The one good thing about Ethereum that I did like was that we never did get this bearish divergence in here. <laughs> you can clearly see the bears certainly woke up here, eh? Wow. Uh, if we ever see a letter in the uh, indicators uh, that looks like an M, be careful. Uh, and the rule on the site is if you see an M, it means the market's getting ready to take its money from you. It's smiling at you. you we all know Goldman Sachs uh, runs uh, the market. And, of course, if Goldman Sachs is smiling at you, uh, just think that, that uh, Secretary of Treasury right now, I think he is an absolute perfect analogy of the 1%. That guy, if he could take your uh, ch children's uh, candy uh, right out of their mouths, um, so he has an after-dinner mint after his uh, $1,000 steak, you know that son of a bitch would do it in a heartbeat. So, sorry, uh, as you can see, I'm <laughs> slow. <laughs> Ooh, that, I think I hit a nerve there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, point of the matter here, uh, you know, this was also such an excellent anecdote of Mountain Man. It's just evil. Um, also, a really good analogy of our little chaos theory that we've been working on. Put out lots of tweets. Holy crap, was that ever a level? Remember we had said that, uh, uh, you know, the one thing I did like about Ethereum was that actually it had a pretty good head of steam behind it. Um... And we didn't really have any nasty momentum divergences. Uh, but at the same time, too, man, we fell off a cliff here. Um, you know, RSI modeling, first M stops the bull, second M starts your bear. Did we go through the 50 line? Yep. This third M coming in here off of this uh, 40 level now being given, this looks like that third leg. Um, so my hunch is, you know, there's some sort of uh, move to the downside getting coming. You can see there are no W's here yet. Um, so we're getting that down move. But the problem here is we might get the down move and then quick, violent ratchet back up. Um, either way, I, I don't, there, there's no trade for me here. No doubt about it. Uh, also, too, uh, this is actually a really good analogy of uh, somebody had made reference to Hogue and Top Step. Uh, Hogue was a really, really big fan of uh, basically selling value uh, moves above value high and buying uh, moves below value low. I uh, can't really see it too well here. I did notice when I was looking at this entire range, I thought that was a really good, yeah, that's probably it there. So looking at this entire range, uh, top of the range, bottom end of the range, notice uh, we were below value, so we accepted back into value. There is a rule that just basically says that if we can accept back into value, then 80% of the time, the market will revisit the other end of value. And that would be your classic Hogue, Hogue trade, whoever uh, made reference to Hogue there over on YouTube. Uh, Anyway, whoever said that. So uh, Mr. Hoagland would be uh, buying on acceptance back into value. And 80% of the time, he would be looking for a tag of the other end of value. Which I hate to say, sure uh, looked like a pretty good uh, idea there. Mr. Uh, Hoagland's 80% rule proved itself to be quite accurate there. So... Um, just the same as the rest of them. I mean, basically, we're caught in mid-flow here. I do remember uh, a couple weeks ago, I had said that maybe this thing might have gone sideways because the MACD, or the, and the MACD had not gone into uh, divergence. And we might have sort of bought it our way out, trend continuation. Obviously, with the loss of these lows, that's been completely negated. And again, if we start thinking chaos theory, it's interesting how this chaos theory, kind of like Bitcoin, is painting for us to come right back down. In this case, chaos is saying 124 and a half. Ooh, shitty. So be forewarned, people. Um, we had a fantastic rally. I sure hope some of you made some money out of that. 
If anything, this is a great analogy that you have to force yourself to pay yourself. When, remember ENFJ. If I had my uh, target, you know, and maybe it was 50% rule, which is perfectly fine. Um, oh, come on, you. As my profit objective, ring the register on this big spike up. And the irony of it all is that you're not even really that interested. Maybe you're going to wait for the market to come back down into reload zones. And the irony of it all is, you know, we could actually approach this from a number of different perspectives. Uh, if I was thinking trend continuation now, which is totally realistic, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I need to see at least a 33% correction, um, but no more than 66. So it's interesting how Mountain Man is basically that trend line. Um, if we dip any further beyond 66 and probably lose this structure, then I think the uptrend is in question. Um, and then also, too, what's interesting is we can probably do things like, and uh, level oneers who just did your fibs, I mean, this is exactly what I want you to see, uh, where you can go A to B. Now, the counter trend rally is kind of tough on this one. It's something like that. Um, I'd have to maybe drill down to, like, say, like a I don't know, four hour chart. Let's see. Ah, there it is. So, uh, this looks to me. Like we can go A to B, and then the counter trend rally, C to D. Which, interesting, takes us right down into that 66 level. So, level winners, here is that excellent application of uh, using extension levels. So, we'll extension level this out. Bing bong. So A, B, C, D, there's bot objectives. We'll do an extension off of this. And G whiz, now that's cool. Uh, does anybody, uh, who could tell me what 1.618 is called in the world of math? Anyone? Thank you, Peter. So I was uh, talking. Crypto got boring again. <laughs> uh, the golden ratio. Yeah, that's right. Well, Andrew or uh, Andre, you got it. So uh, what I'm seeing here now is I'm seeing a reload zone. In fact, I'm seeing a reload zone within a reload zone. Didn't we say something about overlapping reload zones? Hmm. And I'm seeing an A, B, C, D. And I've got a 1.618, the golden ratio. I think we got a pretty good shot that we're going to trade down to this sort of 170 level. I got, and the cool part about it is you could bought this out. Uh, you know, we looked at higher time frames and, of course, the... Uh, Momentum just looks horrifically, horrifically negative. So if you wanted to try and sort of get in on the uh, on the trend continuation trade, then it looks something like, whoops, oh, we're so close. Uh, what do I want to do here? Let's go like that and like that. There we go. Oh, look at that. What a coincidence. Do you see how the market has literally set this level up as the trade level? Right, that is. I mean, if I change that to a line chart, everybody should see that that basically is the M. Boom! See that? So I wouldn't have a problem if you were like, you know, Brian, I'm running a um, a, um, a a lower time frame trading plan. I am trading back and forth in this market, and I've got a nice trend continuation setup. I've got one high, two highs, three highs to risk against. I'm going to go short at 221 and a quarter. 
or risk up to this 238 and change, whatever number it is on whatever exchange here. This is Phoenix, remember? So all your levels are going to be slightly different. And my objective is that 17081. Remember ENFJ? Remember, set it and forget it. This is the way that I can operate as a professional trader while keeping the anxiety as low as possible. All right, so there's your forecast for Ethereum. Wonderful. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, and really, the bottom line here is we can't really even think about getting bullish until we actually start seeing some Ws. And as I sort of pointed out previously, notice this is interesting off the four hour chart, you can really see this personified. What do bottoms look like? Do bottoms usually happen in just one or two days? Not really. Usually they take a period of time, consolidate, take the uh, volatility out of price, higher lows, higher highs. All right, we got ourselves a turn. Same thing here. Market rallies up, it goes sideways, we take the volatility out of the market, we start painting lower highs and lower lows, and all right, back down we go. So usually these transition windows take a good, you know, a good couple weeks. So I've been just, and I definitely think uh, markets love to freak out, and actually us human beings, we love to freak out right around the Ides of March. Remember Julius Caesar? He didn't make it through the Ides of March. Um, sadly, my wife didn't make it through the Ides of March. She got sucked into the vortex of hell. Well, it was really interesting, and it's total side. Uh, but the stock market, the day that she passed away, it was also uh, completely tanking. And it was within about a week or so. And then the market turned around and went screaming right back up. So... You know, interesting from my own life perspective, I will always, of course, have this horrible marker right around the Ides of March. But I've seen this repeatedly in my life. Um, some people make the argument you can associate um, the uh, end of March, uh, beginning of April, you know, with sort of, you know, um, um, vernal equinox and spring equinox. A changing of human behavior. Also, we have a, what used to be the number two largest economy in the world. I think they're three now, but who knows what the fuck's going to happen with that crazy China. Um, Japan's fiscal year end is uh, March 31st. And of course, Japan's gone through some horrific um, new tax policies and stuff. So I'm sure they're scrambling right now because it's an absolute mess in Japan right now. And interestingly enough, you know, that's an interesting sort of side about this COVID. The Japanese government is horribly, horribly underwater. Um, they have rampant deflation. They just announced a huge new tax, which of course never helps anything. Economy is just reeling. So if the government needs to try and meet budget uh, fiscal estimates, and they know that their fiscal year end is March 31st, or is it March 31st? I think it is. Um, isn't it kind of convenient that now all of a sudden, instantly, oh, all of the teachers, we're gonna close the schools down. Oh no, it's COVID, it's COVID, it's beer flu. This is all because of beer flu. Fuck you. I can see this. They, it's so blatantly obvious what they're doing. I mean, they can't meet their numbers. They, they're going to go to the next election and show that they have horrific deficits. Oh, well, here's a way that we can free up a whole bunch of money and bring those budgets back in line just by shutting the whole fucking government down. That's exactly what's going on here, people. Oh, well. Anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> of course, I've told you guys what I think about people's opinions. <laughs> Okay, so we've given you the uh, full meal deal on the big three. Um, as you can see, I'm not really in a big hurry to buy anything here. Um, I am very curious as to watch how Bitcoin is going to act at this important 8,000 mark here. I got a sneaky suspicion that we're going to dump and then that's the bottom and then we rally right off of that. So we'll see what happens. Do I have a trade here? No. Pure conjecture. 
We just made a new low. You know, Brian, I need to see W's for me to even think about being a buyer. And I just got off my short trade. So really, there's nothing for me to do here right now at all. Um, the only other thing I would say was I was quite pleased to see that things like um, uh, Decentraland are getting going. I mean, I don't see any rip-roaring bulls here and, oh, my God, we got a you know, panic buy and everything's going up. I see just a lot of meh. And especially in the face of all three of the big boys pointing lower, don't be in a big hurry here. Um, and, you know, my, our, our basic message to the public when we do our free videos is just watch the shit indexes. As long as these things are just probing against the lows. I mean, I do like for traders to go in there and think about taking shots against these lows, but we don't have any W's yet. There's no signs of divergence here. Um, so it's just a big hurry up. And, you know, if you want to accumulate against the bottom end of the range on these things, nanny nibbles, um, the uh, the uh, level oneers are learning about grim strategy, planting flowers using the nanny nibbles uh, sort of approach little old lady risk management kind of concept uh please understand little old lady is a risk management concept i teach it is not a trade setup you can do a nanny nibble setup are we using the little old lady approach totally fine you could as grim has in his uh the level one is doing you can uh run a, a setup called planting flowers using the little old lady you could call your setup playing canasta i don't really care but little old lady is a risk management tool and approach that i teach on the site not a setup anyway point of the matter here is sharp traders that would like to take shots against the low end of the range this actually isn't a terrible level but is this sort of like, all right, we've W'd out, we got bull divergences, yes, we have location, everything's go. No, it's not even close. What I do like, and you know, as somebody pointed out, KNC, and I think I saw one or two names, we're doing okay in this market. Um, you know, I've said this before, and I know it sounds like a broken record, but I do like the idea of this being a coin pickers market. Try and go and find the story. You know, is there a fundamental driver that's driving your coin? I don't know exactly what the uh, fundamental driver for that KNC was, but I did notice this morning that um, it was doing pretty well, eh? Uh, I thought I had it on here. Am I going to lose all this work that I put in here? <laughs> oh, man. Why don't I just type the symbol in? You'd think that would be the easiest thing to do, eh? All right, well, let's go back. I'll do all that. I don't want to lose all these wonderful uh, levels I've put in here. Uh, all right, so uh, there. Um, okay, so let's try that again. Um, KNC, you should be able to tell me exactly where I should be long KNC, Roman. Like that's the point of this whole exercise. Is ironically enough. You actually, if you listen to me and you listen to my rhetoric, you should actually be able to tell me, Brian, pull up KNC. I bet you would be long from exactly that mark. Like that's how cliche, that's how ironically enough simple this is, is that you should actually be able to tell me exactly where I'm long or short. Go figure, eh? Uh, where should we look at this thing? Do we want to look at it versus Bitcoin or do we want to look at it versus uh, USD? Phoenix, Coinbase, Binance. Where do you like trading this, crazy kids? But uh, I seem to remember I looked at this thing earlier today and I think I agree with you. Uh, well, let's look at it. Nope, didn't look at it there. Uh, I had a chance. <laughs> that didn't work. And probably the reason why these things are rallying is prob probably some sort of listing event. Uh, there's got to be a better chart. I know there was one that I pulled up here this morning that was totally cool. Uh, Coinbase? Is that it? No. I think now I'm just going in circles. Which is the one that I was looking at? I posted it in the lounge this morning. Can anybody remember it? Uh, maybe it was on Binance. All right. Well, if we did this on Binance, I mean, who can tell me where they pretty much know that Brian would be long this? It's not rocket science. There it is on the chart. I'll even 
Zoom in. And what do you think Brian's going to say? Do you think Brian's going to say, oh, yeah, go buy that. That's easy. <laughs> Brian, you dop. Oh, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> anyway, you should all look at this and you should go, gee whiz, that sure looks like a W there. What's that number? Two, five, five, five. Woo, I think the Chinese, don't they like that number too? I mean, you want to go off of clotheslines. I don't know whether you would have gotten a fill though. Oh, you might have if you were really lucky. And this is why sometimes it doesn't really pay to be too fine -tuny, um of your uh, of your trade setup because you might miss the trade if you have your bid. And I've done that on a coin recently. And everybody on Twitter and stuff is like, well, because I got my bid right in front of you, Brian. There's no way you're going to get filled now. And I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you people on Twitter what I want to buy. <laughs> So everybody should look at this and go, okay, well, it's pretty obvious where you should belong. And then, of course, what does that mean? That number is 2555, so who can tell me where I would establish... Oh, number eight? Oh, sorry, Carlos. Who can tell me where I should establish a free position and never have to worry about risk on this thing ever again? Should be pretty obvious. And am I filled? Uh, close. It wouldn't quite get a double there, Andre, but close. Eh, maybe about 5,000 or so. I maybe throw it in at like 5,500. The funny thing is, is, uh, and this is where things like 50% rules can really help you. This might actually probably would be actually a good example of Grimm's uh, planting flowers. So what a coincidence. Do you think this trade was manufactured? I think so. You notice that you're going to put your order to sell at the 50% rule. You buy at 25, you sell at 59. Look at the battle here. You could totally tell that there were a bunch of TRIers with their open sell orders at that level that stopped the bull there. <laughs> you totally know that. After a while, you should look at these charts and go, oh, this is, I can totally see what's going on here. <laughs> Holy shit, that's what time it is. I got to I got to wind this up. All right. Hope you guys uh, got some value out of this. The great part about it is everybody should look at this chart and go, actually this is kind of cool because this is uh, probably an LJ setup. It is. Look at that, son of a gun. So, uh, I think you can make a, another argument. You t you buy the first W on the other side of the trend line break. I would make an argument that's another buy signal there. That's at 3,700. If you bought the LJ, could you sell half on a double and get yourself a risk-free position? You bet. So, I mean, the, the trade ideas are there. They are there. You just got to find them. And congratulations. Nice pick here, guys. This is a good looking chart. But sadly, if uh, you can't go and buy that now. Now, if I was going to buy this, who can tell me what should I do now? Three letters. If you guys haven't learned this by now, I'm going to puke. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, that's that's the ex student, right? <laughs> uh, so if I wanted to buy this, and we go reload zone, and what do you think the odds are reload zone is going to line up with this original buy? What do you think? Pretty good odds? I'd say probably pretty good odds. No, X level one. What does that mean, X level one? Are you, are you, were, you, uh, were you excommunicated from the site? <laughs> ah, look at that. What a coincidence. Mountain Man's all the way up top there, man. I think I'd probably throw in my bid at like 78.6. Just let, what do you think the odds are that there's some gaps down in here that maybe need filling? How about volume profile? Do you think that's probably the bottom of uh, volume profile? And also, if I did want to participate in this, also too, really good analogy of that horizontal support and resistance concept I was telling you about. Now this, and look at that, that horizontal support and resistance is 78.6. I mean, that's ridiculous, eh? So, I can't buy that here, but if I did want to buy, I would just have to be patient and disciplined 
and wait for some sort of pullback. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to pull back. It's just I'm not allowed to chase. I have no idea what this top is going to look like. This thing might just see you later and you just miss the boat. Shit happens. That's the way it goes. But if you go and buy right here, where do you have to risk to? Where do you have to realistically expect the market to be trading to? And the answer is if you go buy here, you have to fully expect the market to come back down, test these lows. So do you want to take that kind of risk uh, when investing and risking your money in the marketplace? That's not a trade I'd be interested in. All right, well, I think I'll leave the video at that. Really good uh, analogy of altcoin market. This is what I think is going on. I think that Saturn-Pluto cross was significant. I think that was the pivot. I think pullbacks are buying opportunities. I think this is your excellent opportunity over the next two or three years for the millennial generation to basically take over the economy. I wouldn't be surprised over the next two or three years you see some absolutely insane chaos in the baby okay boomers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, orange haired politicians with horrible, horrible leadership. Uh, horrible leadership coming out of Europe. You do not go and tell your public to panic. That is terrible leadership. What the fuck is going on in this world? Germany, get your act together. Somebody step up and lead here, please. God, it drives me nuts, the terrible leadership of this world. Anyway, on that wonderful note, <laughs> I'll see all you free YouTubers uh, for the weekly offering with Kvarkinator, and I suppose maybe we'll see you all again uh, for another exciting episode uh, this time next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. All right, everybody, uh, wish me luck with Liam. Um, all the best. And bye for now.